Hey, welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. I was I was doing some exploring in the aisles of the local huge box craft store this morning, uh, looking for one needle. And I got the needle, but I also was thinking about the problem of um, expense and experimenting with a craft like punch needle or rug hooking um, and thinking about the sort of overwhelming expense that just setting up and getting started to try and see if you like it can become. So it got me thinking, um, you know, I've done a lot of videos lately on punch needle and on hooking uh, with yarn and with, with strips, obviously, but particularly with punch needle hooking with the wool strips or just doing punch needle in general. And the supplies can be a bit overwhelming. They can be really expensive. So this episode is going to be about whether you are on a budget or not, because I don't even want to think of it as a budget thing. You can use materials that are less expensive and you can get the same great result. And on our Coffee Time episodes, we have talked about people who have done this, um, artists who have over the years, uh, for example, hooked with acrylic yarns, only red heart every time and you know, had a beautiful, consistent color palette and done beautiful gallery work. So it can be done. I just want to tell you, I want to remind you one more time that if you are using yarns that are not 100% wool, you do not want, if they're a mixed synthetic, like it's got acrylic in it, for example, you your iron can burn them and melt them in the process of blocking at the end. That is the only thing you want to think about. This episode is particularly about using some of the less expensive yarns for punch needle. And I won't be blocking these pieces. So that is not going to be a thought for me. I'm probably going to be using more than one height um, Oxford punch needle. And for that reason, the, the pile of my finished piece will be varied and different and not even. So I'm not going to block it anyway. So that's not even a thought. I eliminate that thought. And I move on to, now that the world is my oyster, what yarns can I use? So this is what I did this morning. Let me bring you right here to the table and show you. This is what, what happens when you go to Joann's uh, or Michael's and you mean to get one needle, you come out with a full bag. So, you know, I picked up some yarns that are not super expensive. Let me bring you even closer. The nice ice cream one. Um, these are real thin. I'm not going to use these for today's project, but, you know, often at these big craft stores, they play the game with you where you need the coupons. And whether they're on your phone or you have them sent in the mail, when you apply all these coupons, you get things for 40, 50, 60 percent off. So you don't really have to think about spending full price if you know you go into the store. Oh, look, here's the needles. Then you're good. But this is what I wanted to show you that I thought was an amazing sort of breakthrough. I put this design on monk's cloth just now. So monk's cloth is like the, the kind of backing you want if you're using a punch needle. It's going to be the best. It's going to work the best. It's tight and it stretches and it's gridded. I don't just mean the large grids like graph paper. I mean, you know, the weave is very, very, the, the weave where you're poking your punch needle each time is very easy to see. It's very even. It's very light background. It's very easy to see. Monk's cloth will work best with punch needle. So along those lines, I drew uh, a design that I'd, I modified a design that I already had called Scattered Joy, and I haven't finished working it out yet. I'm still working it out in my head, um, and I'm thinking about what I can do to make this design of squirrels even more interesting. It had one squirrel in the original design, some leaves, but I went to Joanne's and this is what I found. These yarns are, I'm going to bring you back to me. There's different degrees of yarns at these big craft stores, right? So it's a different story if you go to a knitting store, like a proper yarn store where they're going to have a lot of wools, a lot of mohairs, a lot of variety, and they're a lot more expensive. Those are great too. I love hooking and punching with really fine luxury stuff, but you don't have to do that every time. And maybe you don't feel the need to do that at all. So you go to a place like one of the big craft stores like Joann's or Michael's, and there are lots of choices of yarn. You do see the sort of red heart acrylic that's quite a, a little bit on the thick side. Um, very sort of coarse feeling, not a luxury yarn, but the color is really intense and powerful. And they're interesting, beautiful yarns and the price is great. But then there's a sort of high end yarns that you will find in the same craft store. Now, this is Lion Brand and Lion Brand was 40% off today. So these are what's called the Mandala um, yarns and they look like this. So these were $7.99 and of course, again, 40% off or maybe a coupon for 50% off and they're three something. It's a lot of yarn. So we're looking at a yarn that is 590 yards. That's extraordinary. And look at how many colors you get when you pick this one up. 
you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight distinct colors in this one skein. So if you're buying this for under four dollars, this is this is insane. Um, it's a nice fine yarn. It, I'm going to test whether it punches as beautifully as it looks. So I got this one. I got this one. Same thing. Look at all those gorgeous colors. It doesn't this does this speak to you the way it speaks to me? Like hello, I am full of traditional, classic, primitive rug hooking colors, right? And again, same exact thing, same brand. So I got those two guys, and I got this guy, same thing again. Oh no, this one's a little different. Still Lion brand, maybe different packaging now. And this is how it's going to come out. It shows you, well, you can see how it's going to come out. This is how it's going to come out. One thing I'm going to hark back to once the video goes on a little bit is you realize when you use a yarn like this, I always pull from the center to keep it tidy. You realize that there's a lot of this color in the center. And then although it doesn't look like it, there's just as much as this color here and this color and this color. So if you are looking for color changing, if you are looking to do a background or something and you want the color to change, something that looks like this is not going to change often. You're going to have to go many, 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 many yards before it changes color. So you're going to see in a few minutes how I combat that problem and I separate each one of these skeins into all the separate colors so that I really know what I'm working with. And then I got, they also have these. Now look at this. This is a, this is 100% cotton. Look at all that color variation. They, these come, this is kind of an oatmeal with Delft blue and Wedgwood blue and a darker brown. They have these in a lot of colors. They have these mostly reds that look sort of more like a soft candy cane. They have multi. Um, they have these in a lot of colors, these multis. So this is another great choice. Now, they also have things like the same brand, the Lion brand, Sparkle. Some of the yarns have a little bit of sparkle in them. Interesting, right? Lots of choices and interest. So look at what I've got right here for about $3 and something cents each. Isn't this, honestly, a really lovely palette for primitive hooking? Nice classic colors. And then you know what? They also sell these guys. These are minis. These are, these are Red Heart. These are not Lion brand. These are Red Heart, and these are like a dollar something each. And they're minis, so if I want a little pop, you know, if you know me, you know I like to have a little pop of color. If I want a little pop of that or a little pop of one of these colors, for a dollar something, I am getting, how many skeins are they giving me? 72 yards. That's a lot when you're punching, right? So now look at my palette. This Each one of these has eight colors, so I've got 24 colors. These each have one, two, three, four colors, so 24, um, plus what did I say, one, two, three, four, plus eight is 32. And then this one is just like a multi ever changing. You know, for the um, for the money I paid, three something each, a dollar something each, this is a lot of colors to work with. And then I got just a plain black because you never know when you're gonna want your, your just plain blackout. I might decide to do some outlining with these colors, but I might want this. I might wanna go back actually and get a plain white too, the same weight. So let's see how this goes. What I want to do with this video is I want to show you that at the regular craft store, there are going to be yarns. If you are interested in punching, there are going to be yarns that are going to be interesting for you. And you do get a lot of colors for your money. And these are very thin because I have heard it said, and I feel the same way myself. When I do punch needle, I love the fine punch needle. I love how it feels. I love how easy it is to punch into my backing, but I don't like the way that it's hard to find yarn that fits into the fine. Fine versus, because the punch needle, again, comes in two main sizes, fine and regular. The fine is quite fine, and it's hard to find yarn to fit in the fine. So you end up with the regular, and the regular is great too, but I personally feel like when I punch with the regular, I'm putting a kind of cannonball into the backing and there's nothing to be done about that. So these are the two needles. They're both number 10. These are both Oxford needles. Amy Oxford's website is amazing, filled with information about fine versus regular and also the different numbers that refer to the height of the pile. So these are both number 10. And you can see, hopefully, that one is very fine and the other is much bigger in terms of the hole, much bigger. So what I'm going to do is see if any of these colors that were super inexpensive from the craft store will actually go through my needle without snagging and punch my squirrels. 
That sounded so strange, huh? So let's start with, I am going to roll these into separate balls, but let's just start and see if this works or if this was all uh, a big wind up, winding myself up. Again, I like, you know, let me start with a better color, brighter color. It's nice to pull from the center. You probably know this if you play with yarn at all. It can be a bit of a knot, which it's going to be. It's going to be a terrible knot. Look at that. Do, do, do. All right, let's try the other way. And if it doesn't work this way, you know what? I give up. I give up. I'm going to take out the little cannoli, see if I can find the ends. You know what I'm going to do? Better yet, there we go, the brute's way. And even my scissors don't cut. Really? Should have gone to the scissor aisle. So let's see. Now this is, again, this is just one of the Mandala Lion brand. Super simple, super inexpensive. And I'm putting it through my fine punch needle, my number 10 fine. And I want to see if it's going to work because if you're a puncher, you know that if you are punching with yarn that is too thick, the gauge is too big, it's too, it's too fat, um, it's going to snag constantly. Even if you get it through, it is going to snag and that will be the bane of your everything and it will make you not want to play the game anymore. So that's what I'd like to avoid. So I've got it easily through my number 10 fine. This is a fine punch needle and I'm using craft store yarn. So why don't we just punch, play punch in here for a minute and see what happens. I'll just remind you if you're new that when you punch, you're going down to the hilt every time so you get the same size loop in the back, but your finished piece is on the back. More and more I'm seeing people um, use the back side, the wrong side, which is this side we're looking at as the finished side, just because they like the way it looks better. And it's completely up to you. For me, there is no right way. There is no wrong way. If you like the way it looks, then you, you do it exactly that way. There is nobody that is going to come and tell you different. So it's working really well. I'm just going to stop here for a minute, pull this out a bit. Let's just see what we've got underneath. I will unclamp, see what we've got underneath. It's punching fine. And the main thing is it's not snagging, right? It's not snagging at all. If I was using something thicker, we might be looking at a snag. And when it snags, you just cannot keep moving forward. It's, it's grief and aggravation come raining down and you just can't. So this is working great. Let me see what we've got. Lift up the shenanigans here. There we go. It worked great. It worked great. I'm seeing the little outline. All the little loops came up great. There is no snagging at all. Now, needless to say, if I continue along these lines and fill in this whole thing, I am easily going to have filled my whole piece, completed my entire piece using a fraction of the yarn that I just bought for th it's maybe three fifty each, the big ones, and like a dollar, I don't know, what, this one was actually 99 cents, um, but this one was like a dollar something. So this, I mean, this is extraordinary. This is extraordinary. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put you on pause and I'm going to show you how I make the most out of my skeins and get the most colors out of the, out of the multis that I just bought. Um, and then we will recap because I am, I'm super excited that this worked with the fine needle. I, I do love my thicker yarn and I will continue to punch with the regular, but you know what? If you can go to the craft store and get this kind of yarn with this much variety, these many offbeat colors, it's not primary colors anymore. It's every color you can think of and some colors you haven't thought of because somebody's being paid somewhere to think of the next great color since Wedgwood Blue and Dusty Rose. So I'm going to put you on pause for a minute and then I'm going to show you how I'm rolling up the skeins so that I can get the most out of each one. Now, just for the sake of experimentation, I'm going to try punching with this one, the one that is very, the all cotton, uh, very uh, variegated one. And the reason is because it's just a different one. It's a different material. It's a slightly different width. The thing that I will say about all of these um, mandala shaped ones is they're, they're packed so tightly, and I'm sure that's part of the economy of the cost, is that they're packed so tightly. There's so much yarn packed so tight. It's very hard to get that center out of the center. So with this one, I'm going off to the side to get the yarn. I just gave up on pulling from the center because it's doing the same thing my green one did. But, you know, they pack them tight, I'm sure, so they can ship them, you know, inexpensively. And then they're able to sell them inexpensively. So who cares? Small little problem. But if you're having that problem, just know that I, I had that problem too. 
So now I've got this one in here and it went in there just fine. So I'm gonna to try to fill in my leaf here. I just, I poked around the leaf a little bit more. Um, I shouldn't be doing this right now, like, like most things, but I just couldn't stop. So I'm just gonna go around and see if I can get this in here. It's not quite as tight as I want. I don't have the frame that I normally like to use. Um, and my hoop is getting less and less strong. But it seems to be punching just fine, punching a tree. So again, I'll show you the back of this one when I finish, but I just wanted to check another type of um, wool because I bought three different kinds just to see if this one played up at all. But at the end of the day, you know, these thinner ones, they are 1000% working in the fine punch needle. So again, that my next move is to roll them as soon as I can pull myself away from the actual punching of them. But the whole point is if you feel like working with that regular size punch needle is just too much, too much of a push every time you punch in because it's so, so, so wide, then it's nice to know that you can e economically um, use some less expensive wools and go with the fine needle instead. It's for me a lot easier operating the punching the motion of the punching, the strength you need to make each loop um, is a lot less with the fine needle. So just a thought. Now I'm going to roll and I'm going to show you how I roll to get the most out of all these colors. So now I am over at my little winding station, my ironing board station, and I've got my winder out. And there are lots of kinds of winders that you can use. It's called a yarn winder. So you can find them on Amazon. You can find them on Etsy. I just ordered one that's more of a the Amish style that sits flat and is not this style, uh, that like a tilt-a-whirl style. Um, and I prefer the other style, but it hasn't come yet. So I'll have to show you that when it arrives. For now, this is going to work fine for us. It's going to serve the purpose. So what I'm doing over here is I've got my station set up so that there is not that much grief and aggravation. I've got my yarn right here. Right, I don't have things looped over, things wound under my knees and my armpits. I've just got it right here and I'm putting it through the winder. Not all winders look like this. This is like a double uh, through here and then through here. Yours will be a little bit different. This is a wacky one. And I'm literally just winding it. See, it's gonna give some resistance because these are so tight in the center. Just persevere. And remember that since you are not knitting with your yarn, since you are hooking with it or punching with it, um, if it breaks, if it gives you too much of an, um, a fuss coming out and winding like this, if it gives you too much trouble, then just cut it and tie it. When, you, you know, when you're when you knitting a sweater or something, you don't want there to be lots of breaks because you can see them and it looks bad. But with what we're doing, it doesn't matter if there's breaks. You just work to the break and then you get the next piece. It's okay. So you see how quickly I saw a little knot went on there, but that's okay. I'll sort it out later. I'm just literally doing this straight from here. Let me see if I can get you even closer. I've got, oop, it came out of here. That definitely can happen. And it went in the wrong way. Oh, are you kidding me? See, this is my fantastic mathematical brain at work here. How did I do it? There we go. So I think it works a little bit better if you, now which way was I winding? Oh, mama. Oh, mama. You know, sorry, I'm not going to edit it out because if you know me, you know what a boob I can be. Just boobed it up. Which way was I going? This way. I'm overthinking it. There we go. So, uh-oh, that was a classic example. Do you see what I just did? I kept winding and winding to show you where I was, and I wound past the green. So I'm going to wind backward because that was where our color change was. Do you see it right under that gray? That's where the color change was. So let me get some of this off. It actually would make more sense. It was the universe telling me stop. I wasn't listening. That's usually what happens. Got to be having an ear open for the universe. So what I have here is my green. That's the first color in this little rondelle. So I'm going to cut that. I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to tuck it in. I'm going to tie it up later. What I usually do for myself is when I pull a little skein off like that, I cut it, a little, a little tail, and then I run it through the center here. And then I'm halfway through getting my nail polish off. Isn't that class? Sorry. Jocelyn was doing me up earlier with nail polish and we gave up part way. So I just tie it like that so that I know it's not going to unwind until I need it again. And you know what? That was the green center and now we're onto the gray. So I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to put it through my little winder. I got a pig's breakfast now. I'm going to put it through the winder again and let's see how long it takes us to get to 
the next color. Now this is such an easy way to do it. If you feel, you don't, you don't need this when you start, but if you feel like you're gonna be fooling around with this kind of business a lot, where you get multicolored things and you wanna separate them and you wanna make the most of your colors, because again, if you use it the way it is, your entire piece is gonna be green before it changes color and comes into this beautiful gray. So if you wanna avoid that, you need to separate the colors. You need a way to separate the colors. Can you just put them around your hand in a ball? And just make little balls and you know watch tv while you're doing it of course you can does it does it work better to do it this way no it works great both ways so it doesn't make any difference this is just faster and you know what you can handle so um, these are two of them i'm going to finish winding the others they obviously go super fast i'm going to finish winding the others and i'm going to show you the whole little collection that i made in the last five minutes in case it keeps jamming up of course i also want to tell you in case it's worth mentioning that if you are gonna do this a lot, you might wanna think about what I've done here. I've got an old wooden um, ironing board, which is just an idea, but you might wanna think about bolting it down because when you bolt it down, it doesn't play up, it doesn't unhook, it doesn't uncrank, and you know it's just very, very, very stable. You save a lot of time, grief and aggravation, if you're able to just bolt it down somehow to a fixed point, um, like, a, like a permanent station, you will save yourself so much time uh, doing that. It's just a good tip if you can. Now listen, how often in life are you so happily surprised that something amazingly good has happened? I just wanna show you, I just wound all of the colors in there. Remember, we thought we had something like five or six different colors in there. We actually, in that one skein, have, you can do better than that, right? We have this, we have this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11 absolutely distinct colors. And that is from this um, Lion Brand Yarns Mandala. And this color is 100% acrylic. This color is Warlock. And it made all of these colors out of that one skein. So, you know, the skein was $7.99. It was 40% off today because I was fooling around with coupons. And for three something, I got all of these colors. Some There's a little bit more of some than others, but you can see these are distinct colors. I thought these were the same when we were looking at them. I maybe thought these were the same. I maybe thought these were the same. They're not. These are distinct colors. This is a beautiful sort of prairie palette, 100% acrylic, super squishy and soft. This is not the kind, kind of acrylic that you're thinking of. This is really, really soft. This is a high-end economy yarn. Really, really nice. So I'm going to unwind the others and then we're going to look at them all. But I thought, what a great start. If they all have this many colors multiplied by the three color changing ones I've got, that's a lot for, for like $10, you know, getting this. Let's see what happens. I don't want to count my eggs before they hatch, but that was a surprise. Now wait till you see this one. This is also beautiful. Again, same brand, but this color is going to be called Brownie. Look at this, look what I got out of Brownie. And isn't that beautiful for your primitives? Now, the last one I got, for Warlock, I got 11 colors. This one I got 10 colors, I mean, it's obviously the same size, but I think I messed up a little because you can see a couple of these might be different colors and I just didn't pull it. So look at these beautiful, primitive, great colors that you can do with so much. Some of them are smaller quantity, but you've got a lot of colors in this one cake. So I'm going to undo the last cake and then we can look at everything all together. So I am so glad that I did this video and I am so glad that I was wandering around um, like a nomad around the aisles of Joann's this morning because this is coming out so well. I just want to show you, I punched a little bit more, just a little bit, with two different colors and I'm going to show you. I'll take it out of its thing in a second. But let's just recap. You saw the way that the first two big cakes unraveled and it was a huge success and it was m many more colors than I thought. And I just wanted to show you the last of the big cakes, the last of the big cakes, here we are. And this is the beautiful sort of medley of grays, purples, some real crossover grays too that are so handy, but look at all the different colors you get. So grapey, so vineyard, right? So pretty. This set is called Griffin. So this is it and it's called Griffin. And there it is right there, Griffin. So, and I wanted to also show you the other little guys I did. These little guys, let me just fool with my, I do my own camera work, as you can tell. These little guys here, right, remember those from the packet? Those were the mini, the Red Heart minis. And these were like, this little set was 99 cents. 
um, they're phasing this particular color lot out. This is called Party Mix. This was a set of four that turned into these four. And then this little set was the other one that we looked at. Let me get rid of Party Mix. This is the other little one, same thing, but this one is called Monster Monster. Um, so these are Monster. And yeah, they're a bit Halloween-y, but, you know, independent of each other. They don't have to be Halloween-y. So it is what it is. Very, very pretty. Now, the thing that I want to tell you is that when you are punching, because this whole video is about, for whatever reason, I've got my regular needle, but I'd like to use my fine needle more. I'd like to find more yarns that fit into the fine needle and don't snag because they're too thick. So along those lines, I need to tell you the most important thing is when you are at the craft store and you're looking to decide what what colors you want, you need to think about the weight because if it, if it becomes too thick, the yarn, it's not going to go through the fine needle and you're going to have to use the regular needle. But if you look at this area here, let's see if I can get that in focus. You see this little thing here where my no paint fingernails pointing? Number three. So it's showing you the skein of yarn with the number three. Number three is light. Number three will work. So number three, obviously, or under for a fine needle. I'm just unwinding my thing here because I want to show you. I'm going to take, um, I think I'm going to call this squirrel thing like the battle for the acorn or something like that. But here it is on the other side. I was working it a little bit and I worked some different things into it. Um, haven't filled it out by any means, but you see the green that I've used here is the green from that monster mix, right? This one. And that is a different sort of gauge. So just look with me here so we know that we're talking about the same thing. I'm still looking at that. It's not a number three, it's a number four, but it still went through my fine Oxford punch needle. No problem, not one snag. Three and four are going to work great with your fine punch needle. Now, this is a number 10 fine. I prefer like a 13, um, the, a smaller pile, but this is my number 10 fine that I've been using. And this is my number 10, same height, regular. You can see the hole is very, very different. If you prefer the fine, look on your cartons, your labels for either number three or number four or under. But three and four give you a lot of mileage, a lot of coverage. I also was fooling around with, I just want to show you the multi one here. That was this one. So that was really fun too. That went through no problem. It's cotton. It's a twist. It's, it's I think, a two-ply, but it's a twist. And when you play with twists or tweeds or anything like that in a yarn, it has potential to snag and create uh, trouble. But this comfy cotton blend from again, Lion Brand Yarns, went right through the fine punch needle. This is a number three, right? So it had potential to snag, even though it's thin, because it, the ply is very loose and it's a twist, but it didn't, it worked great. So let's just recap to end the video on what I got here. So let me get rid of all the labels and let's put them all together because now we know which is which. Let's see if I can put them all here without knocking stuff off the table. Can't really, right? But you get the point. You see all the colors that I have here? This is like, this represents, how much does this represent? I got three um, at, I got them on sale for under $4 each, so that was about 12. So this represents about $20. Um, of course, I was fooling around with coupons, but you can too, because they always want you to fool around with coupons. All of this, right? Even the big cakes, even at full price are $7.99. You never pay full price in the big stores. So if you go on Amazon, you might pay full price, but you can get 11 colors out of one cake of yarn. And then you're really looking at a nice big palette for not very much money. And it just reinforces the point that I love to make that when you're starting a new craft, particularly this one, punch needle or hooking, you could equally hook with these. Makes no difference, right? It's just a different technique. I just wanna make the point that when you start a new craft, particularly something like rug hooking or punching, it sometimes feels like it could be a really elite kind of a craft because everything costs so much money. Well, you know what? It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. If you are making a rug for the floor, I wouldn't do it with these 100% acrylics because it's just not going to be hard wearing. I'd go with 100% wool and then you've got more expense. But if you're making a squirrel with a nut for the wall, then you go with these and for $20, you get all this stuff. 
right? I mean, it's crazy. You get whatever colors you like, but it's crazy what you can do. So I hope that you go out there, especially if you are on a budget or even if you're not and see what you can get for your money. It's super fun, super worth it. Your punch needle is going to be 30 something closer to $40. And then you buy just even one cake and you can get going. Just a little bit of monk's cloth, draw your pattern straight on with a, with a Sharpie marker and you are there. You can just start punching something abstract or an initial or um, whatever you want, but you might as well start having fun and you can do it economically. So I hope this video was handy for you. Number three and number four, if you are using a fine punch needle. Talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.